Welcome everybody to episode 8. We are going to talk about sealers, when I use them, and how I put them on. Alright, there are a lot of different uh, sealers you can use for your arrows out there. I'm going to be real honest with you, because I had some really good mentors to start with, I just continued to use the same products that they showed me to use. Um, I've played with a couple different ones since then, but I have yet to find one that's any better. So I've gone back to what I've originally started with. For my whole arrow sealer, I use Daly's Profin. It's hands down the best sealer I've found. I like it because it's thin enough to where it doesn't add a lot of weight and it doesn't target burn as bad as some of the other ones that I've tried. And what target burn is, for those of you that, that might be brand new to this, uh, wood arrows have the tendency when you're shooting into a 3D style target or a foam target, sometimes the target will burn itself onto the arrow because of friction and it will be hard to pull out and after a while there will be buildup on the end of your arrow. Uh, it's really kind of a pain, it adds weight to it and the fact that you keep having a fight to pull them out, it just uh, it doesn't make it that much fun, especially if you're shooting a lot of weight. If you're shooting a hunting weight bow, target burn sucks. So um, that's why I like the Dailies Pro Fin. It doesn't hardly burn at all. Uh, even on some of the cheaper uh, 3D targets that don't use a real high quality, it, it seems to perform very well. Okay, the other reason I like the Pro Fin is it holds up very well to moisture. I live on the wet side of Oregon. We get rain here a lot. In fact, November is one of our rainiest months of the year and that's usually when I want to be out blacktail hunting. So uh, on all of my arrows, I will put four coats of sealer on them and I've never had a problem with uh, water infiltration or with moisture getting into the shaft, even on the arrows that I've shot for a while. So. Um, you know, after you shoot them, you might get a nick, you might get a bump. Even at that, I, the, the sealer seems to hold up to where I don't get moisture in there. Um, my arrows don't go crooked, and it just seems to hold up very well. So, uh, again, if it ain't broke, I don't fix it. Um, I may try another one uh, one of these days, but uh, I just haven't had any need to. So... I know that the dailies can sometimes be hard to find, or at least they have been in the past, but I just found out they are on Amazon. So uh, if you want to try some of this, uh, look them up on Amazon. And uh, it, it is expensive. It's not very cheap, but uh, so far I've found it to be worth it. Now the best way to apply a sealer that i found is to free dip it. Put in the dip tube, and I'll demonstrate here in a little bit, but y'all put it in the dip tube, dip it in there, and allow it to just drip off. And again, that's why I like the dailies. It's thin enough, it's thin enough that it doesn't cake on. Um, I have tried gasket lacquer early on because it is very quick. I don't like it. I don't think it gives you as good of a finish as free dipping. Um, the, the layers are almost too thin and they don't hold up well. So, and that was with me putting four to five coats on there. I think it's as most as I put on because if, if I do any more than that, um, I might as well just free dip then. So uh, again, if you're using that now and it's working for you, go for it. Uh, that's one thing about this is, is I'm showing you my methods of making wood arrows and it's been successful for me, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only way. That's, that's the beauty of, of traditional archery and doing that. And if you guys have a better way or something else you're having good luck with, please leave a comment below. So uh, it's something that not only I read, but all the other viewers, and we can kind of figure this out together. I'll show you how I free dip on the entire shaft here next. Okay, so, best thing I found putting on stains is to get yourself a dip tube. And again, this is uh, one of my mentors, Dave Dorn, actually invented these, and that's why I've always used them. Uh, again, I think they're the best ones out there. And uh, another reason why uh, I do it this way. You can spray on your finish and you can even brush it on, but this has always been the easiest and this has been my go-to. All right, so one of the tips I have for you, these, uh, these dip tubes are about the size of a ball canning jar. In fact, you can use a canning lid uh, once your, your stock lid, they come with these, when you buy the dip tube, they come with these white lids. 
they have a special paper inside that'll stand up uh, to the lacquers and to some of the harsher chemicals that, that uh, we used to put on them, like the, the bony and acre lac. Great crown dip, but it stinks really bad. And uh, it would eat a ball canning lid. So you can't use these on that. With the products that I'm using, mostly water-based for, for the water-based uh, acrylics and stuff, these will work just fine. So what I've done is I've replaced that. What I like to do is get a funnel that you would use for canning that'll sit in there. And what I do is I put it here on the dip tube. That gives me a little bit more working room there so when the uh, finish is dripping off, it doesn't make a huge mess around my bench. And it also makes it easier for refilling and re-pouring. So get yourself one of these. Now the one thing you will have to do is trim the edge of this lid or the opening, I mean, to the, uh, the tube a little bit because when these are manufactured, they're manufactured with a little bit wider, flat uh, face so that you'll have a good sealing surface uh, onto the lid. Uh, so you want to be careful when you, you don't want to cut too much because if you cut it all the way to the edge, then your finish and stuff will evaporate. All the water will come out of there after time. Uh, it'll go bad before you can use it. Now with that said, Dailies does have a shelf life. It seems like for me, once I open it, the can, and start using it, it will last me about six weeks before it starts to go bad. During the winter, I get, well I get about six weeks during the winter. Depends on how many arrows I'm making. Right now I'm making enough to where I use it up before it goes bad on me. During the summer, I might, depending on the humidity and the temperature in the room, it, it, that time will shorten. Uh, I think last last year I got like in August I got about three weeks to a month out of a can and then it starts to get cloudy. You'll notice that when you start to dip it it gets thick and it's it's time to change it out. So then I will uh, change out all the dip, clean the tube out and then reuse it, reuse the, the tube but then I'll have to go buy a new a new can. So, so that's something to think about if you're gonna try doing this for yourself and you're only gonna build two to three dozen I'd say a year. You might have better luck if you take the, the, the finish out of the tube and pour it back into the can and put the can seal on there real tight. That might get you a little bit of time, but uh, take that into account when you're starting to factor in the money. Like I said in the first episode, if you're gonna try to do this to save yourself some money, you probably won't. You gotta, you, you gotta be into making your own arrows because you enjoy the work and you want the satisfaction of being able to use something you've made with your own hands. Uh, now, for this dip, we're going to dip these shafts that I've already stained with the body stain. I'm going to put a white crown dip on this afterwards. And so like I said, this dip will, or this sealer will yellow the colors of your dip a little bit or the colors of your cresting. So I'll show you how to get around that here in a second. This is what the first steps are. So when you get your arrow, they're already cut to length, they're tapered on both sides. I take, I get these uh, paper clips or clothesline clips with a little bit of rubber inside they get good teeth that way and it holds on pretty good uh, I have seen some guys take wire nuts from electrical wire nuts and screw them onto the top and then grab onto those with clips and that seems to hold it but these little rubber ones for me are the easiest they just grab on clips last a long time so the thing with the nice thing about these tubes is you can do a couple at a time so I made myself this little hook and I'll hang one and that one is dripping off in the tube so I'll take this and I'll get another one and by the time I dip this other one this first one is done dripping or streaming off and then I just hang it on my dipping station here I've built uh, this little tray at an angle and it goes into a waste bin down here that uh, I just swap out and clean out from time to time but that is the best way that I found for dipping uh, the arrows. Okay, so these are the uh, arrows that we dipped yesterday that were stained. Now the arrows, I don't know if you can hear that. It's rough. When you first dip an arrow, it will raise the grain on the shaft and they'll be rough. You gotta sand those. Um, and we only have to do it after your first coat. So. Uh, these have completely dried also. You gotta let these dry and cure a little bit because you need it to be hard. 
if uh, if you do it when they're soft, you'll get pieces of your 3M pad or your steel wool stuck in there, and it, it they don't turn out good. So let them dry. These have dried all day yesterday when we dipped them, and then overnight. Um, so they've got probably about 18 hours of drying and carrying time on there, and that's uh, again this is uh, January. 23rd here 2018 so it's cold uh, and it's wet we, we've it's been raining all day yesterday and today and my uh, dehumidifier here in the other room has been it seems like it's been going non-stop to keep the humidity out of these two rooms and it's heated so during the summer you can get away uh, when it's uh, hotter temperature and lower humidity it doesn't take as long to get to this point but uh, yeah we'll sand these down real quick and then they'll go in for their second coat <laughs> second coat let it dry 12 hours do the third coat let that dry and then I'll crest them um, and then we'll do dip in the poly and then we'll turn around and tip dip them for the fourth and final coat and then that'll this arrow will have a complete uh, four coats of sealer across the entire shaft okay so if you're gonna want to use a testers or an enamel to uh, crest with or you want that nice bright white crown dip. This is how you're going to get around it This arrow is still sealed with three coats of the dailies pro fin um, after I've coated it three times and I allow it to dry I will then crest it Okay, and I'll knock some of the gloss down with a 3m pad or a stainless steel to give it teeth So these are crested and dried Okay and then I'm going to dip them in a white water bay or a water-based polyacrylic. I've tried the Minwax. I didn't quite like the way it, uh, the texture of it or the way the glue adhered to it. So since then I've gone to a bonding. Uh, I started out with their Crestlac or their Acrylac, uh, which comes in a can looking like this. Uh, this is their Crestlac here is their new product. It's a clear color so I will use that to go over the top of this and I know that all my adhesives will fit uh, attached to it well and uh, it has not let me down. I've probably done 300 dozen arrows using this method and uh, it works great. So uh, give this a try. Now to put it on I'm gonna dip it the same way you did the the sealer on there or I did. I'm gonna clip this on. Now just a word of caution, this does come out a little milky white color when you first dip it. Don't let that freak you out. It will dry crystal clear and that's how you get the bright white look after you crown dip those. So I have it here in the tube. I just mix it up a little bit. I will dip just past a good quarter inch uh, past the end of the uh, crust and then I will let it drip off. A little bit once it goes once it stops streaming off and goes to a dip like I showed you before it's the same concept as a crown dip I'll just hang it up here and let it dry and that's how you'll get that crystal clear look to get you that bright white appearance okay so now we have dipped the back half in that poly now what we do is turn it around and I'll dip in the dailies pro fin again from just below the crest to the tip and that will seal the entire arrow then the arrow will then have four coats of sealer on it uh, now you can overlap a little bit it uh, that's no big deal because the water or the uh, the poly is is protecting the uh, cresting you just don't want to go over it too much because it, again it will have a yellowing effect Well, I hope you liked this episode on aero sealers. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and if uh, there's something really confusing you, I'll try to include that in the next episode. I recently had the opportunity to contribute 
to the chapter in uh, Clay Hayes' new book. He has a chapter in here on uh, making uh, arrows. I got to contribute into some of that. So uh, if you're interested in the book, you can get an autographed copy from his website, twistestave.com. Uh, I also ha will have some available on my website. Uh, he also has some cool looking shirts like the one I'm wearing on there, so give it a look. If you're interested in some of the primitive skills, uh, bow building, woodsmanship, he also has a killer YouTube channel on here. Uh, give it a look, and uh, I hope you enjoy the series. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from you in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.